Little Red Oak presents Plant a Seed with Steve and Judy Evanson. Beautiful flowers. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Do you remember to say thank you to your family and friends when they do something kind for you? What about God? Have you thanked Him today for being your friend, for giving you food to eat, for giving you life? It's important to remember to say thank you to friends and family. And it's important to say thank you to God, too. Listen to what David says about giving thanks. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Psalms 100 verse 4. Father, thank you that we can come to worship you in this beautiful place. Thank you for your love to us and for the beautiful birds and flowers you've made for us to enjoy. In Jesus' name. Do you have any neighbors that live close to you? Do you have any neighbors that live far away? That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? We usually think of neighbors as those who live right next door to us, don't we? But that's not what Jesus was teaching when he was talking about the Good Samaritan, was it? He taught that our neighbor is anyone who needs our help. And he said that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, 27.
one day, when Jesus was visiting in the home of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, Martha was busy with all the necessary preparations while Mary sat and listened to Jesus talk. When Martha complained to Jesus because Mary wasn't helping her, Jesus told her that Mary had chosen what was most important. It's easy for us to get so busy with other things that we don't spend time with Jesus. We need to remember that the time we spend with Jesus is very important because the things we learn about Him and our friendship with Him can never be taken away from us. Only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Have you ever had a birthday party and no one came? Jesus told a story about a man who was having a party. When he sent his servants out to get those who he'd invited, they all had excuses why they couldn't come. The man then sent his servants out into the streets to invite whoever would come to the party. Jesus has invited us to live with him in heaven, but he won't force us to. Jesus wants us to go out into the streets where we live and tell others about Him so that we all may live with Him forever. Go out to the roads and country lanes and make them come in so that my house will be full. Luke 14, 23. If you've ever lost a pet or a favorite toy, you should be able to understand what this next verse is talking about. When you lose something really special, you look everywhere you can think of. If you lose a pet, you may drive around the neighborhood calling the pet's name or put up posters with the pet's picture and your phone number so that if anyone sees it, they can call you. If you don't find it right away, you may look for days or weeks, but when you find your pet, it makes you so happy. If you've ever found something special that was lost, you know how God and the angels feel when we say we're sorry for something we've done wrong. 
they get excited and they rejoice. Listen. There is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15, 10. Have you ever told a friend or your brother or sister that you were sorry for being unkind, but they weren't willing to forgive you? Maybe they didn't talk to you for a while or they said unkind things about you to your other friends. You don't have to worry about that when you confess your sins to God. He is anxious to forgive our sins and to give us power to overcome them. He's only waiting for us to confess our sins and to ask for His help to change. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, If you were blind and someone was able to make you see, do you think that you would be thankful? I'm sure that you would be. And I'm sure that you'd be anxious to tell everyone you met that someone had healed your eyes and that you could see. Jesus does many things that may not seem as exciting as making the blind to see. But we need to be sure that we thank Him and that we tell others of how good He's been to us. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men. Psalms 107, 8. Do you remember the story of Jesus' friend Lazarus? 
he became very sick and died. His family and friends were very sad, but Jesus had a special surprise for them. He went to the tomb where Lazarus was buried, and after having the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb, he said, Lazarus, come out, and Lazarus did. You may have a close friend or family member who has died. You were probably very sad when they died. But Jesus is coming soon to take us to heaven, and when he does, he will call those who are dead, and they will be raised to life and come forth from their graves just like Lazarus did, except they will have new bodies. That will be a very happy time. All who are in the grave shall hear his voice and come out. John 5, 28 and 29. Have you ever started to tell someone something and they told you to go away because they were busy? That's what the disciples told some mothers one day when they brought their children to Jesus. The disciples thought Jesus had more important things to do. But when Jesus saw what was happening, he told the disciples to let the little children come to him. We should never turn away anyone who wants to learn about Jesus either because everyone is important to him. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Matthew 19, 14. One day, a very rich man asked Jesus what he needed to do to be saved. Jesus told him to keep the commandments. When the rich man said that he had done that ever since he was a child, Jesus told him to sell all that he had and give his money to the poor and follow him. The Bible says that the man went away sad because he had great riches. Jesus doesn't expect everyone to sell their homes and cars and furniture so they can help the poor. What he was trying to teach this man was that if he wanted to be ready to enjoy heaven, he needed to learn to be unselfish. Doing what Jesus asks us to do is more important than anything else. Give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Matthew 19, 21. Give to the poor, give to the poor.
Do you know anyone who cheats? Maybe some of your friends have cheated on tests at school or cheat when they play games. Did you know that Jesus loves cheaters? He hates cheating, but he loves people, even when they have cheated. The story of Zacchaeus shows us that this is true. If we were all perfect, Jesus would not have needed to die on the cross. The reason Jesus died was to save sinners. And when we realize that Jesus loves us no matter what we've done, it makes us want to obey him. If we want to be like Jesus, we need to love people even when they have done things that are wrong. And when they see that we have Jesus' love in our hearts, maybe they will want to obey him too. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save what is lost in Luke 19.10. Do you like to receive gifts? I don't think I've ever known anyone who didn't. Sometimes people give us gifts to show us that they appreciate something we've done for them. But most of the time, we receive gifts without doing anything to earn them. When your parents give you a birthday present, they don't give it to you because you deserve it, but because they love you. And this is one way to show you they're glad you're their child. That's what grace is like. The Bible says we're saved by grace. We can't do anything to earn eternal life in heaven. God will give the gift of eternal life to those who accept it, not because of anything they've done, but because of their love for Jesus who died to save them. That's grace. It is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. It is If someone says something nice to you, or if they do something nice for you, it really makes you like that person, doesn't it? That's what this next verse talks about. Jesus loved us so much, even though we are sinners, 
that he was willing to die for us so that we might have eternal life. And because he loves us so much, we can love others, even though they might not like us. That's what God's love is all about. And that's what makes God's love so special. We love because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19.